All right, welcome back to my DIY. Today, I'm gonna finally come back to you guys and tell you what everything I did with this patio itself, because the time-lapse video is kind of cool to watch, but it doesn't give you the specific information that I wanted to pass along to you, tips, tricks, and uh, definite things to avoid when, you, when you're doing something like this for a project. So, I got my notes, so we'll go ahead and get right to it. Start off by going for tips for success. So, with the, the first thing I did was, when uh, I would say, is to measure everything out. So we knew right away our patio was going to be 11 feet by 12 feet. Square footage you're going to need and also everything going down from the bricks themselves. Because this is not just the bricks, it's going to be a layer of sand, be a layer of gravel, and also any dirt you have to have to, to level to the, the whole, whole area itself. But more specifically for this was not measuring the gravel. So when I laid my, when I had everything down, or the, uh, when I picked up all the dirt itself, down probably eight, seven and a half inches to eight inches down from where the, the top level was, was supposed to be. I didn't measure the gravel that I put on. We did the calculations via the computer, uh, the website that we used, which was awesome by the way, more on that in, in a little bit. I didn't measure the gravel itself from the dirt to the top. So the, the spacing, it, while it looks good now, I'm not, I'm not really sure I, I measured it. I did not measure it all. So I didn't, when I put the gravel down with the 93 bags that we had of gravel to, to, to fit this small area. So it probably was good, but I didn't measure it. So when we, I went to screed it to make sure it was all good, just with the gravel itself, I didn't, uh, didn't know where to start and where to end. And also kind of kind of going off of where our uh, the slope was on the house. I didn't know where that should start and where also that should end either. Make sure you measure the gravel in all the different areas, probably maybe five areas along, along the area when you're doing it. So tip, tip, tip number one. I had a lot of dirt with this project uh, in the end, far too much dirt. By that I mean I dug out eight inches from, from my patio over here to the right all the way to the edge. So that was a lot of dirt I had to dig up and had to dispose of. I live in a neighborhood and we don't have a really good, easy way to dispose of dispose of dirt. I don't have a truck currently. I had to sell it. My apologies. I don't have a truck currently, so I had to borrow a friend's truck and uh, ping people on Facebook to for me to give them give them give away dirt. Again, this wasn't very good dirt to give away, but it was still dirt nonetheless that we had to dispose of. So no no which can do hit and before. So not you have the dirt sitting piling up for a week like like we did. So plan ahead is a the tip for that one. The last step with this project was polymeric sand. So after you get the bricks laid down in a nice particular fashion, you get the you get the uh, the edge the edging on screwed in pounded in whatever have you is you, they call it polymeric sand. So it's not a concrete, but once it gets wet, it hardens up and holds fast to the bricks themselves, keeps them from from breaking apart. And right now it's looking absolutely awesome. However, all, all the tips and tricks I saw online about the polymeric sand was to put it on, sweep it in, and to brush it off and then wet it down. That's, that's all I saw. I, didn't, oh, I knew how much I had and how much I had to use, but other than that, I really didn't know what, what to go off of. So this stuff is it's very strong, but it's also very brittle too. So the, the tip for there is when, once you put it on, you want to use as blow off as much as you can with a shop vac, and then don't worry about getting um, getting down into it. It'll probably stay in there. And then once you do that, wet it down. So we wetted it down, very a very very minimal amount. I did not know how how wet to get it or how much to use. But the very two days later, it actually just absolutely poured on us and got the whole area just completely soaked. That being said, and it's been doing just fine. So there's no after effects at all. And then kind of going back to blowing it off, make sure you're blowing it off in the right direction. So what happened for us is when it got blown off, it went all over the backyard and also a, a additional concrete pad. So I was able just to use a wire brush and because the polymeric sand had gotten there, it hardened and, and it was holding fast to concrete. But with a simple polymeric uh, uh, wired brush, I was able to, to clear it up and also to clear up any uh, residue on top of the bricks themselves came right up absolutely look so it looks absolutely good but a couple of a couple of things which I, I could have avoided the berries the barriers that I used from I think it was Home Depot that we bought it from they were not very robust they were just some pretty flimsy plastic material and I'd recommend using better nails we use plastic the plastic nails that, that really kind of came with it I'd recommend buying um, metal longer nails like maybe like timber nails and, and use those instead 
So kind of some mistakes we made along the process, but now for things that made our my job a lot easier. So have your materials close by. We ordered everything already from the store to have delivered to your house. I paid I paid some money to have it delivered. I hate doing it when I could have just done it myself, but again, that's a lot of material we had delivered. So I'm, I'm kind of glad that we did that. I'm kind of glad we did that. We didn't just uh, order order it buy it in store, have it shipped, and have it uh, deliver by myself, which would have been taking very time consuming. So we all came to our house, and once we did that, we put it, we had it all in our backyard, splayed out, right along the edge of the patio that was gonna go in. So there was no transport time when we were actually working on the project. It was all very easy to go, and right there, and, and no problems, and no problems at all. Tasks are easier when you have more than one person doing it. Uh, my wife did a lot of work to, to help me do this project, whether it was just moving, moving bricks, moving materials, uh, laying down materials as well. Uh, if you have help, definitely take it. Uh, there's no, no reward for doing something by yourself. We had to rent out equipment, so that's be my number third tip would be rent out your equipment. I didn't think I would have needed a compactor or plate setter to, to really compact the ground, but that was definitely needed. We had to rent that out from the local hardware store as well as a tiller. I was thinking I could just done a, do it by hand, but that tiller was very beneficial. It was taking me a lot more than just one day to do the project if we hadn't rented out, rented out that tiller. This kind of seems kind of silly, but I uh, actually recommend back support. Uh, the next couple of days, my back was uh, just from like muscle, like muscle wise, was a, was was hurting pretty good. Um, just from all the bending over, all the back breaking work you, work you're doing, which isn't isn't expected. It's just Plan, plan for it. So plan better than I did for that. Get a, get a, get a back brace or something. It'll make things a lot easier. I would say the biggest thing would be to, would be plan ahead. So um, we talk about the amount of bags we the amount of bags that we had. We also knew to the number how many bricks we needed. That was because of the awesome website, uh, the uh, Menards um, uh, website. So they have a patio patio uh, help center, build a center. Now. I didn't buy the stuff from Menards, sorry, but I did use their website to plan it all out. So kind of go over th their website just a little bit, but it was a very, I had, so you go in, the, go to the website, you fill out all the information, and from there they tell you exactly how many bags of sand you need, how many bags of gravel, and also how many bricks you need for the, for the, uh, for the for the area that you want, I knew I needed exactly four, 651 bricks, 93 bags of gravel, and 23 bags of sand, which was absolutely awesome. Made my job, my life, much much easier because I had no idea, uh, just from looking at it, how how much I needed to have to have done. Very time-consuming process, and probably over overbought and overspent, which I did not need to do. So that was a very very nice thing to, to have uh, for free and gave me all information I needed. The very last thing I'll talk about is second and third order effects. So this area here was pretty much unusable space uh, until we put the patio in. It was kind of side discharge from our main patio uh, where we have our normal seating area. And this is a kind of more of a fire pit for s'mores and, and whatnot. But this area was very really unusable. So what I wanted to do was kind of build up this area with, with the herringbone patio uh, brick patio set to, to use this area more. However, that pushed all of the water runoff and rain over to the side of the house, which is just just off camera. So that is, so kind of you kind of kind of know I'm going with this. So all the rain, water, and runoff all went to the side of the yard. So it was bad bad enough there already, but now this is 130 feet square square feet more runoff and rain that go into a smaller area. So what happened then is the next, the very next rain that was talked about was a complete downpour and that side yard was just atrocious, inches deep of water. So the second order effect of this patio was I had to put in, I chose to put in, I didn't film any of this, I just kind of took a, a picture here and there, uh, a sump pump. And with two drain inputs uh, to take the water from the runoff from this area and also from the side yard out, out to the street. Much, much needed uh, with how much rain we're getting in the springtime frame. Summer probably won't use it at all, but in the spring it helped out a lot with how much water we were getting. And it's gonna cut down on mosquitoes and everything else like that. So, and of course, that dang dog, he will, if he sees water, he wants to walk through it and drink it. So he was bringing in very muddy feet every single day, every single time he came outside. So that was much, uh, definitely needed for this process. Can I do a little more uh, footage here, kind of show you exactly what, where we did and where we worked. But again, thank you for watching. Any questions on this process, I am a open book. I'm not gonna lie, sure coat anything. This was a lot of fun to do, but again, it was, it was pretty time consuming and a lot of, uh, a lot of hard work to do. Again, just took one day. 
but the, everything else associated with it took a little longer. We had to put the we had to put sod down on the edge as well to also with, with the drainage that we had to put in for this for the sump pump as well as build up the area just a little bit more for, for better drainage and also to dispose of the dirt which I didn't plan for that took about a week too but for the main project one day and, and until next time everybody thank you for stopping by and uh, have a great day